Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, I'm back with this TV again, the Weston House 3710, with the annoying buzzing sound, but this time the TV does not turn on and off. So, just to be honest with you, I already know what's the problem, but I'm going to show you how it came to my mind, and I didn't even need to use the schematics, I use a, an example of an audio board, and... If you know a little bit about audio, then you would understand how I got this so quick. I'm going to give you an example. So, the example I was talking about, this is an audio board. If you look at, if you just look at the board and you see all the components that's put together, basically, that's, that's giving you a clue on any board how it should look. So, here we have filter capacitors, ceramic capacitors, and inductors. So, right away... Knowing that this board is designed like that, and many other boards that I've checked out, you know, that's how I was able to say, okay, this is the audio side for the main board. As you can see right here, so I get the same exact um, circuitry. You have an inductor right here. You have the filter capacitor and the two ceramic capacitors. And then right here, you have your speaker wires. So I'm going to show you more how, how all of this is connected once I take the board out. So being that I saw all of this, you know, from the top, I was like, okay, that's the audio part. First thing I did was heat up the capacitors. And the reason why I heated up the capacitors to see if I was, to be, if I was able to get sound, which I did. But when it's cold, I don't get sound. So now I'm going to show you my examples of what I mean. Example number one. I'll turn on the TV. You hear it? Horrible. All right? You can see right here this music playing. It's been playing since I started the video. So nothing. So I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to heat it up. Oh, get plugged in. All right, so now I'm going to heat the, up the capacitors. Well, the one capacitor, but I'm going to still change all three. They all rated at 470 microfarads with 35 volts. That's the max capacity of the voltage. So here we go. So once I heat this up, you're going to see that I'm going to get the sound in right away. And the moment it gets cold, the sound, it goes right back to where it started from. So I know that that's a leaking capacitor that went bad. All right, so now I'm going to turn it on. You don't hear the sound, right? No, eh. Look, it's going to turn on. See? No, eh. And you're going to see that the, 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 the song is... Look. So I'm going to pause that. So... This is the reason why, right off the back, I knew that it was going to be a problem with the filter capacitors because those filter capacitors, especially what, uh, at the number they rated at, 470, what's 220, 330s, and 470s, microfarads are usually audio capacitors. So I'm going to take this board out, and I'm going to replace the, the, the capacitors. Okay, so here we have the board out. These are the three capacitors I was talking about, one, two, and three. This is the one I heated up. Let's flip it to the other side. You can actually see here. Let's see. One, two, and three. These are the three capacitors. So as you can see, this is the system right here. I'm oh, sorry. So you can see this is the system right here. Where the three, comp the three capacitors is working together. You see? Let me flip it around. You can see this for the audio. It's right here. It tells you the speaker, the out, the outlines for the speakers, each each speaker line. I mean, each wire, what it is for. Right here, it's all labeled out. So basically, like I said, this whole this capacitor comes from the negative to the positive, or sorry, positive to the negative, shoots out the power from here, and then it starts around here. So I guess I'm gonna remove one. Two and three. There we go. 
These are the new capacitors. I'm gonna use some solder paste. Makes it much easier for me. I run out of regular solder. Same thing. Throw a little bit on top. Not too much. Let's take out the first one. Where's my pliers? Damn it. Right, let's try to do this best I can. Push it down. There we go. Push it down a little bit from here. Almost out. There we go. It's the first cap. Let's see, got the second one. quicker and the third one there we go now they all out perfect now we're gonna start putting these back in So that's negative negatively so as you can see just in case you're doing the board this side it's the negative always okay that's what we call the hot side and the positive side is the neutral side all right so let's cut this a little bit so it can be even Just get us a disordering tool, but I do have one. It's just there we go. Just can't find it. That's the problem. But I do have one. All right, that's the first one. The second one is right here. I'm doing this so you can stay in place 
the last one is over here. Now the job is almost done. All I gotta do is just put a little bit of more solder paste, and cut those extra wires off, and I'm good to go. And clean up a little bit of the solder. I mean the flocks that leaves behind. I wanna put enough so that way you can have a good ground. We have good connection that ground, I'm sorry. See, nice and steady in the moment, as steady as a rock. There we go. All right, so let's cut this off. I guess this is a note clipper. <laughs> Still works the same as a as a wire cutter. Let's clean up a little bit of alcohol. job better so it was one two and three
But just in case, y'all yeah, wonder how I took out the main board, you have to take everything out. Because this right here will mess up. Moment of truth. Let's see if I was able to fix it. And if I still get the same annoying sound, it's okay. I'm not going to take off those those capacitors. actually good when you change capacitors because capacitors, filter capacitors after a while, they start going bad. But like I said, I haven't checked it out. But if it does still have that annoying noise, then I'm looking at this little capacitor right there. If you can see it right there. Being that that's part of the audio filter, I mean, that ca the capacitor is there to also filter out sound. You know, it could be that one or these two little ones right here on the side. So let's see if it did, if it freaks. And if it didn't, then we're, I'm going to take it off and see if I have that capacitor and replace it. Nope. All right, so I have a ESR meter here. I'm going to turn it off. Um, I'm gonna remove this cap because I won't I can't see the ratings of it And as I remove it, I'm also gonna test it out that way. I don't have to waste my time figuring out You know which one is bad with this ESR meter. It'll just help me do the job quicker. So it's right here So there's these two little pins right here so close I can just push it out like that hold it in a little bit like that keep pushing it out there you go it's hard to grab there we go so I got it out so this is 15 volts rated at 47 microfarads so let's see if this one is good. So we put it in here. And let's see how much loss it has. This is horrible. See? 32% of V loss. And it's at 37.2. Eurofarad, microfarad, so that means that this cap is bad. Okay, so I was actually able to find um, not the same exact capacitor, the only difference is it's a little bit bigger, and the voltage is at rated at 25 volts, but it's still 47 microfarads. Um, it's about 9% more um, um, voltage of a capacity, it's not that much, <clears throat> doesn't do any damage to the board anyway. So I'm going to remove this board, I mean this <clears throat> capacitor from this board, and I'm going to install it. So this, let's see. out there we go so that's out the board is still good to use now that the cap is out let's test it out make sure that this one is good let's 
see. Perfect. It's supposed to be, as you can see right here, it's close to its rating. It's at 46.12 microfarads. It's rated at 47, so that's how it's supposed to look. 1.04% of loss. That means this cap is good. Let's give you an example again. What's a bad cap? <laughs> this little guy. This little tiny guy right here. See, it's supposed to be at 47, or at least close to 47 microfarads, and it has 30%, 37% of loss. So that's how you know that this capacitor is open. All right, so let me see how I'll put this in. I'm going to have to do some craziness to it. to negative Double check, make sure that they were in the right form they needed to be. Right, let's put a little bit more of flux. It should be good to go now. Now, let's test her out. Hopefully, I was right, and I don't know how to take it all apart again. All right, so I'm not going to say much. The only thing I'm going to say is, remember what I've said throughout the whole video. Um, I will have to wait 15 minutes for the 
for the 15 or 20 minutes, depending how cold the room is, for the TV to actually have sound. Another thing is that the TV um, would still have a humming sound to it, even after the sound will come in. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the TV without this, without playing music. Then I'm going to put the music and see if I get audio. Um, and that's about it. Hopefully, I, I'm like 80% sure that I fixed it, being that there was two capacitors that were bad. So these caps wasn't actually bad. So actually that little one, little that this little tiny guy right here. Oh, well, actually, no. Look, I have a damaged part. So I was right. So maybe, And like I told you before, when you heat up capacitors, they tend to work because the electrons tend to pass easier. Anyway, there's videos based on that if you want to know more. So here we go. So I'm going to turn on the TV. Let me see. And, and the TV is ice, it's cold as ice. Let's see. Boom. See? Turned on. And I don't hear no eh. Not even, not even after I heat up the compressor. Remember, it still had like a little eh so, sound to it, like a little uh, horrible ground sound. I don't get that. And the TV is on. Now, let's put on sound. It's really quiet. Wow. I haven't heard this TV like that in, in, in a while. Now I'm gonna press play. Boom! Look at that. Working like it's brand new again. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, thank you for watching. And any of you who have the same problem with this TV, that's probably your problem too. Have a blessing day. Goodbye.